carburetor is is a 990 carburetor with the diaphragm with the spiral diaphragm on it already for you the primer bulb has been changed the ethanol the, this is all stuff that help prevent ethanol problems it's already made for you so I got, I got a couple of uh, people bro that, that are newbies they're just starting out with the gas stuff this year Hector and they're commenting on my shit I gotta like it's ridiculous bro some of these guys are like I got a, I got this carburetor, blah, blah, and it blows your 1107, your 990s, and your 813s away. I'm like, motherfucker, do you know what that is? It's, it's, a, it's a lazy man carburetor. That's that carburetor. You, could, you guys with your 990s, you could do the same thing. Just go to DDM, buy the primer bulb, the black primer bulb. You can get the wall, bro. It's from wall, bro. It's ethanol resistant. All right, so pump gas. You guys with pump gas. I can, you guys that can't get VP fuel, that can't get Cam 2. All right, we got, we got VP fuel. We have Cam 2 because I can. All right, you guys can do the same thing, but you, go, you don't want to. So you're going to grab a tank like this. You're going to go to a gas station, and you're going to get pump gas. Pump gas got ethanol. Ethanol will fuck up your diaphragms and your two-stroke uh, carburetors, right? The, the element inside, it's like a paperish uh, element inside, like, like, and that, that gets hard on you. And also the fuel lines at what time, all right? And it also ruins your primer bulb, okay? Uh, shit, man, I used to have so many. There's one here, all right? This is an old one right here, but mine doesn't go bad because I run cam too. But that right there with pump gas will go to shit, will, will heat up, it'll get cracked. Now, these black primer bulbs, that won't happen, right? Wallbro is awesome. They came out with these ethanol-resistant products now, so there's no excuses for landscapers and for us uh, brap heads, all right? A lot of the new uh, small engine equipment stuff is coming with that, but, but you guys, you can convert your own 990s. You can convert your 1107s to the spiral diaphragm uh, setup, to the primer bulb. I have videos that show how to do that shit. That's what the 1242 carburetor is. Alright? It's not a different carburetor. It's not a... But, dude, this one guy, man, he just... He, I just want to, like, choke the motherfucker because all his vi viewers think he's a fucking idiot. But all, but if he gets, like, a new a new person watching his shit, they're going to get a wrong message from the guy, you know? That pissing me off, bro. But, here, let's grab that shit over there. Always off the ground when I do them. And your brakes look like they're tight. I wonder. What up, people? I guess some people just never learn. Now, first of all, let me start out. Before I show you, actually, it's a, after I heard about this, because as you guys know, I have nothing to hide, okay? By the way, welcome all Muggy Maniacs, Truggy Maniacs, Buggy Maniacs, yeah, Monster Truck guys, it's still Nitro. Uh, and 
obviously fifth scale and Saniac. So real quick before I show you uh, a conversation that I had this afternoon with uh, the main builder at OBR, Dan. His name's, I'm not, I forgot his last name, but Dan. Okay, I call him Dan the Man. He builds most, does most of the building at OBR. Those of you who might know or don't know, uh, O'Neill Brothers Racing. That's where my engine's coming from. Same one, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Woogie Nitro is running, but mine's the signature series of what he's running. Basically, I went to OBR and I said, what's the best 34 reed engine that you make? 34 reed signature series. So, anyway, <laughs> um, when I heard th about this and I heard about, you know, I call him, he no, you know, I have no, nothing to hide, like I said, Mr. Za. Now, I want to say I have no animosity towards John Bodegel. I, I don't have, you know, but the one thing that, and you guys know, sometimes history repeats itself. And this is funny, once again, here we go, is I will, will always state my case as far as give you facts and evidence of what I know. And not just what I say. I have a 30-minute conversation that you guys are going to hear in a minute where I talk to Dan for 30 minutes on the phone explaining the 1242 carburetor, which uh, O'Neill Brothers... Um, are the ones that highly recommend on their 34 reads like that guy had as you guys seen right there on his his engine So I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not you know You'll hear me on this conversation because I record it and I'm have a, a picture of you. I'm showing you his new um, They have a new um, velocity stack Okay, I think it's called the V power or something or I, I forgot already. But anyway, it's a new velocity stack So I hit him up about that because I, I was curious about it, you know, and you'll hear the whole conversation I don't want to let the cat out of the bag. Let you guys hear word for word what Dan Okay said remember he's the one that does Sean the owner of O'Neill rate O'Neill brothers He does a lot of the he does. He's the porter mostly Sean's main thing there. He is the owner He does a lot of the sales and you know gets all their business Dan's the main guy that does the engine building, but Sean, <clears throat> you can don't, and like I said, once again, this is my disclaimer, don't believe what I say, go call them, get on the phone, Dan will answer the phone and talk to you anytime, <clears throat> that's what I love about one of the biggest things that turned me on to uh, uh, OBR was the fact that their customer service is A1, they always pick up the phone, you'll hear me say on the video, and this is, you know, I didn't just say this, I've contacted, uh, tried to call, Bartolone Racing, and it's funny because they're like around the corner from me numerous times. Chris Bartolone has never returned my call once. Now, I know he's going through a lot of stuff right now, and those of you that don't know, FYI, because some people just won't let you keep you posted of what's real. You know the muggy's going to keep it real. And I can't, this came from a person, because I didn't know either, that knows Chris Bartolone personally. Okay, and I'm not going to mention or drop any names. They know who they are. But what happened recently is Chris Bartolone, the guy's been making Bartolone pipes, um, because also another thing you guys know or don't know, Chris outsources pretty much most of his stuff. Different between him and O'Neill Brothers is they don't outsource all their stuff. Okay, they a lot of most of their stuff, except for the Turtle Racing billet aluminum stuff, is in house. Okay, Bartolone Racing outsources a lot of mostly everything. Okay, now and I'm not. This isn't to badmouth Chris, and you'll hear on the 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 conversation on the that I had on the phone with Dan today that he tells me the same thing. He doesn't have a problem with Chris, but when it comes to business and you know what they do for a living, there's certain things that they don't that you know they're doing different things into each his own. But anyway, I'm gonna I was gonna sh well I want to show you guys uh, under the hood real quick. Um, of because a lot of people have been asking me um, what all the upgrades that I have done um, to this um, real quickly but again this isn't I'm not trying to start anything I'm just you know I'm gonna just let you guys be the judge that's all I got to say you heard what Mr. Zod just said about the 1242 carb okay by the way he wasn't talking about me because I don't make any comments on his videos because I'm blocked still on his videos and me and him were supposed to be talking somebody that I know is close to him said that he was gonna give me a call the whole thing, and let me just tell you, and this, I can mean this in the nicest way, and I understand. John Bodegel is always going to speak highly and defend the people that he represents their products. Most of you know that. If you don't, that's the MO. That's one of the reasons that me and him got into it way back, 
because we were each defending the people that did our motor work, okay? And you all know, I don't have to say anything. We know how that went, okay? I, I We just moved on from there. And again, I want to let you guys know I have no animosity towards John. I think John's a great guy uh, at heart. I think, you know, he's he's done a lot of things and I respect what he did. Okay, but the one thing I can say when it comes to the knowledge of an engine and the builder, listen to your engine builder. I'll say it here. Don't listen. You know, I'm going to say don't listen. Take what these guys, and I do the same thing with, with One Fifth RC. Shout out to my brother from Under Mother. Shout out to Big John and shout out to the, the normal three guys. Big John, One Fifth R, uh, Garage Chris. His name's Chris. Shout out to Lee RC. He's, my, he's another guy that's been helping me with my build. And shout out to Dan. These four guys, again, I'll emphasize, are, are, are I'm going what they say. But even Elite and, and Big Johnny and, and Chris, when it comes to the engine, I'll listen to what they have to say based on their experience. But I got to ultimately go with what the guy that builds the engine says. And that will never change with me. Same thing as you guys know that I do with Lance. He's building and modifying my nitro engines. I don't care what anybody says when it comes to the the, the technical and the you know the the modifications and the engine that he's doing. I'm going, but what he says, I don't give a shit who says what. And I suggest that you do the same thing, and I'm going to do the same thing in fiscal. It's not going to be different. Dan, whatever he says, he's the one building these engines. He's the one that like you'll hear him say he does this for a living. If he knows, he said, if he knows anything and anything else, he knows engineering engines and that's why obr is where they are but you'll hear the conversation i don't want to do too much talking uh i am kind of a little fired up on it because you know it kind of irks me that people put out this type of information and not really doing all the the the, the, the research and we know why it's happened because yeah you know people want to you know I don't want to say hate, but obviously they, they want to kick a little bit of dirt on the people that are the competition. <laughs> and you'll hear right out of Dan's mouth because the conversation, again, that you're going to hear for the next 30 minutes is me and Dan. So whether you guys listen to all of it or don't listen to all of it or believe it, hey, this is coming from the horse's mouth, so to speak. It's not me saying anything. It's not me making up anything. It's Dan himself explaining the 1242 carburetor and their new velocity stack, which, by the way, I'm going to be getting. Um, I'm ordering it probably order it next week um so when it comes with my engine but anyway real quick 5b uh all what i've got done to this thing so far and i'm still not done okay titanium all four front and rear titanium posts shock posts okay no didn't spare any expenses there these are by a company called the top billet aluminum 7075 cnc machine obviously anodized to match shock purchase those change all Lungsford titanium turnbuckles, front and rear. Mad Max extended hubs and the a top to match. These are also a top uh, aluminum um, um, nuts. Um, a top also. Elite runs one of these. It's a different color. He's the one that recommended it. It's got a screen in it. Love those. Um, where else? Okay, rear. These are, I think, by Extreme. You can get the ones like Woogie's has, which are pretty cool. I might get another set. Carbon fiber. Not plastic, not colored, not... These are real car carbon fiber. I just wish they were thicker. Mad Max. So these are these extenders are an inch and a half. So I got a one point... Yeah, an inch and a half all the way around wider. Okay, uh, nothing really special in the rear except for the titanium. Um, rear shock post as well. Obviously, you guys know my body. Some people are like, oh, you put too much holes or the. I'm going to do a mesh underneath here. To, to a mesh, like a screen mesh, so the holes aren't wide open, keep some of the debris out. Mesh here. I might do a mesh up in here. Um, I might just do the mesh where the holes are. I'm going to leave those open. I don't know. I maybe mesh this. I just don't want chunks of stuff flying in there. Meshing the front, what I'll probably do that. Anyway, that's my custom one of a kind sick body oh look at check it out i got the jq uh and lefty the great sticker that i got from them uh yeah i love stickers there you go the dirt people hell yeah but this is my uh venom body that i did and yeah, it turned out okay i think i could have done better i don't know what am i going to do on the next one but anyway rims and tires i'm running the mad max giant grip these are not cheap ddm beads uh bead locks 
These are silverback dish rims. I got another one. I'm building a white pair of these, which they'll be all white. And then I think I'll do the beadlocks black. So anyway, and then let's go under the hood. <sighs> Rear Bartolone. I mean, I use Bartolone now. I, I mean, I probably should have done the low C. I just wanted the rear, um, the chrome, that chrome color in the rear. Um, this, obviously, I did the low C, the uh, TLR uh, top aluminum and front aluminum chassis. Uh, just installed this. This is the SPPS. I forgot. The, but anyways, you get it through DDM. This is the billet aluminum 7075 machined aluminum um, servo holder for the steering servos. So that thing is not moving. Running the JX servos, highly recommended by Elite. Uh, I'm running, I think that's a Mad Max um, throttle, um, uh, throttle horn aluminum. It's got bearings in it, which is why I got it. Um, what else? Got the, the RC, RC modified center fully billet aluminum diff that was not cheap although shout out to chris one fifth rc he helped me to get it uh as far as he he lets me know when the deal of the days are um but anyway stock tank might get the aluminum uh billet aluminum uh um tank braces um front again uh we have the um carbon i mean the carbon fiber but the uh these are all tungsten. for uh titanium so anyway that's pretty much the run through oh we've also got the carbon fiber brace that keeps the throttle servo when, when you give it brake and throttle from shifting um i am running a right now i ordered a 4000 i'm not running no lipos i have well, i can't lift this up i think i don't want to get my my wrench but anyway it's the uh spectrum uh life battery 3000 milliamp i also have a 4000 milliamp coming so I'm not running lipos in my shit. I don't care what anybody, you do what you want. This is the stock Losi uh, brace that goes on there. And I think you guys seen, I already guys showed you, I believe, in case I didn't. Oh, <coughs> we are running the Mad Max 9000 spring clutch. Highly recommended by a lot of people that I know that run OBR read, read engines and the 5B. Um, it's not cheap. It's RC Max. You don't have to worry about shoes falling off but anyway um dang did i scratch i'm all worried about scratching my shit now <laughs> we're gonna beat this thing up but this thing is a bad i also i did my little personal touches carbon fiber wrap on the front carbon fiber wrap on the wing i did find some carbon fiber uh wing mount braces i might throw in those on so i'm gonna add a couple little cosmetic things but other than that you know um oh i also you can't see them i went and spent the money they were not cheap but I have, instead of the stock steel um, servo posts, they're titanium in both of these. <clears throat> and I might get the uh, billet aluminum front body mounts, and then they have a rear one by the same company that makes the brace. But anyway, that's it. I uh, just wanted to show you guys that. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to say enjoy the video, but listen, you've seen what, what was just stated there by Mr. Zah. No disrespect to him. Let's just keep it real. It's just funny that, you know, history... Maybe, I don't know, want to say it's repeating itself, but I, I don't know. You know, I just think all these guys, no matter how much experience he has, and I've learned a lot from Mr. Za, and like I said, credit due where credit's due. I've, I've always defended him, always, okay? And this might, might cause some more ripples between us, but I'm never going to shy away from the truth, especially when people want to give out um, inaccurate, uh, information or not the whole truth about stuff that I'm going to be running. So, like I said, he wasn't talking about the guy. He said the the comments or whatever that he, he seemed like he was kind of pissed off. So I, I don't talk to John. Um, I haven't in a long time. Will we ever talk again? I don't know. I keep hearing it from people and that know him and oh, he's gonna you know he he said you know keep up you know anyway. I haven't heard anything. He has my number unless he lost it. If he, uh, you know, my friend, he can contact people that he, that he knows to talk to me and he can get in touch with me if he wanted to. You know, I'm not revolving my whole fifth scale and nitro hobby around any one person. But I did learn a lot from Mr. Zah. Um, I just think it's, it's just unfortunate that people do a lot of stuff in this hobby for their own personal gain and i think it's a, it's a damn shame and i think that's why we have the drama that we have because people don't do their homework and listen to the wrong people uh, anyway that's all i got 
catch you guys on the next video. I decided to give the, uh, because this needs to be said. This needs to be known. Listen to what Dan has to say. Um, and you be the judge. Okay? Alright, people. Catch you guys few. This thing, I can't wait to get my engine. All the map pipe is coming soon. And we're going to do a killer unboxing when it comes. And uh, this thing should be ready to wrap within the next few weeks. So, Muggy's out. More DNC footage. I've got a Cologden video uh, uh, interview coming up. I had a chance to sit down with Wally Builds and he'll give you the MO on the JQ because he knows JQ personally and knows everything that's going on with JQ. So stay tuned with that. Stay tuned for that Cologden video uh, footage interview conversation. I call it and the JQ. Um, what's going on with JQ? Where I sat down and, and chatted with uh, Wally Builds for for a good minute. It's like ten minutes. All right, people. That's all I got, man. And. Uh, yeah, like I said, believe, go by what the guy that built your engine tells you. Nobody else. Trust me. He can't, you, that goes for Chris Barlow. If I was running Barlow engines, I'm going by what he says. Not what anybody else says. Unless the engine builder doesn't know as much as the person that you might think does. And then that's not good either. <laughs> Alright, people. Muggy's out. Um, we'll be back at the, at the regular Nitro Cave um, after I'm done uh, house sitting here. So, alright. Peace out. Okay, so it's called the it's called the what the power 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 stack or is that what it's called? Yeah, we call it a, we call it the OBR power stack. Sounds sounds dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like sounds like sounds yeah. like, sounds like power. I right? sounds like some power. Because my friend yeah. goes, yeah. Because I know we were talking about. It. He goes, yeah. I just ordered it. You know, a couple of buddy of mine's. You know, that been kind of. Um, you know, I got a few, besides you, I've got like, you know, a few, few guys. You know, like I said, a couple of the guys uh, race, but then a couple of the guys bash. That's why when I got one thing from the other side of these guys, you know, these are guys that I've known for a while and that I trust that, you know, they know what they're doing and they've been doing it long enough and have a few, not just one, the signatures, but they have a few OBR engines. And that's what they tell me. Don't waste your money on the bar loans, bro. I mean, they're okay, but if you want, you know, just everything, you know, across the board, and especially like we talked about, you know, customer service, they're very um, accessible guys, Bartolone, I just haven't had, like, I've, I've tried to get a hold of him four or five times in the last few weeks, and I've got nothing yet, nothing, not one thing, I don't know how you do yeah. business that way, I'm, I'm not, you know, I've been around the block for a while, obviously, I'm 53 years old, and I've been in, you know, this hobby, not fit scale, you know, this is new to me, but I've been doing my homework for the last, probably the last five years, <laughs> you know, but I, like I said, I try not to go by, I try to go by reputable sources, I guess is the best way to say it, you know what I'm saying, with guys that got, okay, let me see your resume, what are you, all, what's this guy all about, okay, uh, uh, you know, and, and go from there, instead of just saying, oh, well, he's, He's he's been doing pit scale for 30 years. Yeah, but there's a lot of guys that have been doing shit for 30 years that I wouldn't, you know, follow them across the street. So, right. you know, because they just, yeah. like you said, they just bad habits sometimes and they just, it's, you know, and then, you know, next thing you know, you're you're, you're wasting money or spending more money. I, I, you know, I've learned the hard way already. So, you know, do it one time right. That's my attitude. So, anyway, so the power stack. I'm looking at it. 1808. OBR power stack, velocity stack. So what's the deal on this thing? So what it is is, um, you know, what we've been working on is trying to come out with a complete package uh, for, you know, complete drop-in package from the, you know, from the velocity stack carburetor to the pipe. And this was just another piece of that full package. You know, mm -hmm. we pretty much got tired of seeing people running Barlow products on our on our engines and our yeah. products. So we... We, I've got my I got my guy friends I I mean I've got guys that are friends of mine I should say that that are like that and that's kind of seems the whole thing and I we've already talked about you know hey you know Chris and and yeah. and everything and you guys have been you guys are the guys of the competition pretty much and you know it's start alone versus you know I don't it's kind of seem I, I don't like to use that word competition but it, it is what it is business competitors yeah. have business competitors you know same thing with when you know an HCL Nitro. Most people that know been in a school match for a while been around um, the guys that are into the, the modified engines not so much because it's different you gotta I tell people learn to differentiate racing from bashing because it's different you know same hobby yeah but there's there's a, there's a, a lot of different things you do it's not just because it's all fit scale or all a scale nitro the Mr. Joe racer that you know is into his racing all the time and Mr. Guy that just wants freaking 
nasty modified engines that are you know putting everything to the ground it's a whole different setup and everything so people forget yeah. that you know so same thing in Fitzgill, you know and yeah, that's, yeah, it's so same thing. but anyway um, so so what we did is um you know here's just another piece of that puzzle that we're trying to make and what we did is you know velocity stacks on a whole mm -hmm. um you know they're not huge gains but they do they do something well they swear by the um, glory hole that but that you know certain people promote you know and oh well yeah we the one that has the 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 uh, velocity stack that has the holes where you, the bolts go into compared to the one that doesn't have one it's it, how does it, it it's air is coming in air it doesn't obstruct obstruct it with the bolts and without the bolts enough for you to make any huge you know it's not going to make that big of a difference but they make it out you know you got to get the bar low and they call it the glory hole because it's there's no bolts uh, cutouts where it, you know, will obstruct the airflow, which sounds stupid to me, but that's what they do. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that, that's kind of the thing, and you know, with two strokes, the, with two strokes, they take what they want. It's not like a four stroke where you actually can force air into them. Um, two strokes, you know, and for the most part, his v, uh, the, the glory hole is what they're, I guess they're called. Yeah, they call it the glory hole, the stack, because it, like um, I said, it just doesn't have the bolt cutouts where you put yeah, the bolts through. It's all smooth. I mean, as far as like an airflow, I mean, yeah, it helps, but is it really producing more power? And in my opinion, it doesn't because it's just an open venturi, you know. Yeah. Um. So what we did is we actually our our stack is actually a tapered stack, and you notice it's kind of a horn style. It doesn't. It's not just like this giant open hole. Yeah, yeah. That's what I when I'm looking at it. I mean, it looks pretty cool, but it looks it doesn't have that normal. You know, it almost looks kind of like, reminds me of the, uh, uh, like in, uh, for hot rods, they put the, uh, instead of the, having the carburetors on, they have a straight, the injectors that stick out like, or the, I don't know if that's what they're called, but they're like stacks. Yeah, kind of like what, what you see on like Volkswagen Weber carburetors. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, they, I'm very familiar with that. I grew up in Orange County during the mecca of Volkswagens and BWs. Um, you know, we wrench, that's what we, a lot of wrenching that, that, I had a chance to experience, you know, when they, when, when bugs, you know, were, were like, everybody was driving bugs in Orange County, you know, I mean, you're, you're not far from there where you guys, you know, are at in, in Anna or yeah. Torrance or whatever, but same thing, you know, El Segundo, Redondo Beach, I mean, it was Volkswagen Mecca during the 80s, man, you know, and I worked for one of the largest distributors, Johnny's Speed and Chrome, and then there were Small Car Specialties, and then Fast Eddies, which I think it's all around, you know, so I'm familiar with, with Weber's and, you know, Everybody wants a, you know, 1776, 2186, you know, badass Volkswagen, 1835, dual 48 Webers. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was all, we were, yeah. what we were all about. Yeah. <laughs> badass, you know, so, but anyway, so, yeah. So where this came from was really the boat, the, the stack was kind of, was inspired by the boat world. Um, they, they run stacks like that in the boats, and most of the time they don't run air filters because obviously they're in the water and they're yeah. worried about dust. Yeah. Um, so what it is, internally, there's actually a taper from the inside bore to the outside bore. There's a, there's a taper that goes to the outside, and what that does is it creates more velocity coming through the intake. So as the engine is cycling, okay, there's a dead spot. Um, there's a dead spot in the mid-range, okay, to where, you, where your, your intake track velocity dips and then it climbs. It dips and it climbs. It's very... It's really quick dip and it dip and you know de decrease and increase in velocity. So what that what that taper does and that horn style does is it keeps that the velocity up. That dip is a lot less decrease. Okay. okay yeah. So when so pretty much what it does is like say you're coming off the line or in the mid range and you let off the throttle and then you get back on it again. Yeah. That response goes up with that stack. So. It keeps that uh, the intake velocity more consistent by okay. having that horn style yeah. and that taper style. So would you say it's kind of like a tuning type option, somewhat? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's definitely gonna because, because gonna in, ni in ni because in nitro. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but in, ni in nitro, we're always uh, you know we're messing around with venturis. Okay, you know, set your set your uh, endpoints on your throttle if you're running, uh, you know just right on the cusp of or the the right on the edge of the velocity or you know what 
if you're, you know, you might want to try for better fuel mileage, but still good power, you know, run an 8, eight millimeter or instead of a 7.5 or run a whatever, you know what I mean? We, we do that a lot in nitro, you know, as you probably know, I'm sure, but, you know, kind of sounds like this velocity, the whole velocity stack, stack thing is Venturi, the, it's, you know, you're obviously, uh, you're, tink you're tinkering with the uh, air and fuel mixture, right? Now the other options that you see on it is that you see the backwards barbed um, rims on the side of it. Yeah. And that came from the from the racing world. Now, especially in the buggies, seeing how like our filters stick out of the body, guys have had problems with other V stacks like the Glory Hole and like the one inch and three quarter inch V stacks where they're smooth. So what happens when you clamp on a filter to them? They they can come loose. Like guys, you know, they, if they oil their filters too much and you know, they clamp down, well, yeah. the, the filter can fall off. So what we did is uh, most of these most most of these clamp on filters, they have ribs on the inside. So what we did is we matched those bar backwards barbed machine cuts to the ribs. So when you clamp that filter on, it hooks into that pl into the rubber. Oh, I see. Not you could not rip it off. That shit ain't okay, going nowhere, then, huh? <laughs> yeah, and the other thing, too, is if you notice about, like, the Glory Hole and some other V-Stacks, they yeah. have, like, a boss at the bottom of them that makes the filter stick out farther than what it really should. Even even on a reed, I mean, the reed cases stick out the filters most of the time about three-quarters of an inch. Anyway, so, yeah, I don't seem you want that, yeah. especially on a 5B. I mean, you're almost... In, in, I mean, I can imagine having... You know, I got uh, Mad Max... Uh, um, I don't know. I think they're two inch or one inch. I don't. I think they're an inch. Um, hub extenders all the way around on my 5B, um, which I want. I've a lot of guys recommended that you know, as far as it, you know, the 5B isn't as stable. It, you know, has a tendency to roll a little bit. You know, sometimes uh, compared to a 5T. So by putting those extenders on, get it, kick it out a little bit wider. That that helps you know stabilize the 5B a little bit. You know, and I'm trusting people that have been, like I said, that know what they're talking about as far as they have 5Bs and they've experienced it with, in all different aspects. And, you know, okay, well, let me, let me, like I said, I won't know a lot of this till I start running my, 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 my 5B for the first time. But, you know, I'm kind of trying to do as much homework as I can. So I, it's just less headaches, you know, that I have to deal with and less shit I have to deal with, you know, can hit the ground running instead of tweaking and tuning. <laughs> having fun yeah you know. but anyway so, so but 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 as far as the barb fittings go and what we did is like say the glory hole like we were just talking about the boss i, I mean it not only does your filter stick out because of the intake track but now you got an eighth eighth inch boss sticking your filter out even farther so what we did is we didn't make a boss you notice you can you can put your filter on really far onto that V stack, okay? Yeah. And it allows you to tuck your filter in as far as you can onto the onto the intake track. So your filter's not sticking out an eighth of an inch farther than where it really should, you know, already. Yeah. So we designed this stack not only give power, but to be more, you know, to grab that filter for, so to prevent it falling and on top of that to be able to suck the filter in farther so for better clearance so yeah. okay you know there's a there's a lot of you know, you know there's a lot of things that went into that design you know that were you know performance inspired and race in inspired yeah and that's what it is you know um i mean it's a good product i mean so how tested, how will this go what when you, that's what i'm telling you again how will this um uh, how should I say, uh, um, help my um, uh, OBR, the engine you're building for me, my signature series. Like, you know, let's just say a, a full modded 34 read signature series using one of these on there will help bottom, top, mid, what, what, a little bit more power, or, you know, what, 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 you know what I'm saying? From what I, what, from our testing and okay. what I've seen on my personal car, what I see is a more aggressive off the line yeah. with it and just a more, huh? like I was telling you, like it, yeah. in the mid range, like say when you come off the throttle and back yeah, on the so throttle, that response that yeah, no, when I'm it comes ready. back on, that's what I'm, I'm seeing, ready, a more ready, consistent ready. hit when you come on to yeah. throttle is what I'm seeing. I mean, is it like, um, 
holy shit, it's going to change your whole fucking world thing. Oh, I'm doing wheelies no. now. <laughs> Not, no, no, kidding. I mean... Better, I better, that. better on I fuel. Would, better fuel. I don't know. I mean, they yeah, don't get a little bad. bit, yeah, a little bit better on the fuel. Now I haven't tested the fuel economy on it yet because, you know, I haven't been. I, my first race back is going to be here in the world in about a couple weeks. Yeah. And I'm going to try to. I'm going to see. You know, I'm going to start. You know, uh, tracking my fuel economy with it with my engine. A couple of our race guys have them on their engines now, so we're going to start taking fuel readings. You know, especially at this track we're going to. It's a it's a very high bite track, so it likes to eat. Okay. You know, so we'll be able to really test that theory up at Victorville. But, um, I mean, it's a good $50 part that's going to lock your filter on, give you a little bit more power. Okay. Um, you know. Because um, I'm going to, I mean, I, I want to, I mean, I, I, I don't want to sound like, you know, I don't have anything against Chris Bartolone other than, I'm I, again, like a lot of people probably feel the same way I do. Bartolone, 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 Bartolone. Based on what? Just Bartolone? I mean, I understand. Yeah, I understand name brand loyalty, but let's really let's crunch numbers and really talk about what works and what doesn't work. That, that's that's the kind of person I am. You know, I want to. You can talk all you want, but I want to see. <laughs> seeing is believing. Talk talk cheap. I always tell people, you know, on my channel, don't let your mouth write checks. Your ass can't cash. You know what I mean? Don't be talk. Don't talk y'all this shit. And you know, like I said, I don't have anything against Chris other than his customer service. Is the it, there isn't any. But anyway, um, I had a guy that got a thirty four read in his five B. He's running. Uh, you know, he's doing the whole Boulder Shell way, and that, uh, it's just he's a good guy. We've had beefs in the past, but we're cool now. You know, and that was Nitro. You know, and now we're both at the same time crossing into fifth scale. He, the only reason I know, and he, whether he, you know, he, he will ever admit it, he basically got a 5B because of me. Now, I don't want to say, oh, I'm the one, but it had a lot to do with it because Baudigel wanted to pull him towards OBR and towards Bartolone, and I knew that was going to, and I, I wasn't going to pressure the guy, do what you want, you know, it's your money. All I'm telling you is from what I know, people that got both and ran both, and I know, you know, facts, this is what it is, and that's why I chose OBR 34 Signature Read Series, you know, fully, you know, getting it modified and, and you know, um, and everything, but Bar uh, um, a guy made a video um, that saying that the 1242 carburetor was only set up or you can only run it or only, I'm not sure I haven't watched his video this is just what I heard this guy saying on his video because he's running your your modified v2 uh, 34 read um, the one you got the the newer one or whatever and he really likes it and I'm glad because the guy's probably promoting you know um, instead of talking about you know other people and Bartolone 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 which I thought he was gonna go he's like man I really he ran the sh he ran it pretty good, you know. He took it to a big old soccer field, and he, it was he was getting on it. He's still breaking it in, but uh, he's running a the stock pair, uh, pair, uh, spur fifty eight, and he's running from what he was saying and I seen it didn't have a lot as much bottom. And like I said, this is all could be the engine too. He's running a twenty two, and the twenty two was pulling hard at top, but it didn't have too much snap down the mid and bottom. Okay, um, he's running the 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 Bartolome pipe the uh made for that engine or whatever the one that was we were talking about um i believe he he's just 28 to 1 that's what he's going to run all the way so anyway um john i don't know not i don't know how to can't remember who he said what who was but i i think that you know we call him mr za because he's always saying za za and i you know instead of saying boda jail or whatever but it's him and i don't know he was saying somebody else the 1242 was only for pump gas. <laughs> no. What? I'm like, when you get it, like, why are, and I'm trying to tell this guy, why are you listening to somebody that doesn't even run a Bartolone engine? I mean, it doesn't even run an OBR 34 signature series. He's had them, and he's ran them, but currently he's, you know, I don't know if he even still even has them, but I know he's did an unboxing of your read, uh, th signature series. He got two of them from you, for him and his buddy, Bo uh, Baudigel did, and he never ran them. I never see him run it. He ran it on video. So I, I don't know if he even has it. I know his friend Carlos has it. And he put it in his, his X2. Um, and he liked it. Whatever. But I was at telling him, why are you listening to some guy that's not even running an OBR 34 read? Doesn't even run an OBR engine, period. 
instead of the guys that make your engines, I tell them, don't be an idiot. I said, you're, you're sounding, you know, and I don't, you can do what you want, but one thing that I feel that my my duty as a, a enthusiast and, and whatever in either eighth scale or fifth scale, I'm not going to, especially, you know, I have the ability to, to, to do whatever on my channel and say whatever I want. And that's why a lot of people don't like me because I'm too forward and I just tell the truth. And if you don't like it, fucking move on. I don't care. So... I said, why are you listening? Why are you listening to Bo I said, why are you listening to Bonus Show? I said, you can call Dan and you can call Sean. That 1242 is what they recommended me. Oh, I'm glad I got the 990. And it's not even a Rooster Tail mod, it's just a stock 990. And he's running that on that, that B2 with the glory hole and the Bartolone pipe. And it, it's hey, that engine that he has, and he's happy with it. It's it's getting it. And he's like, you know what? I just want more bottom and mid. I think I'm gonna go to I don't want to do the 20 opinion because it's I, I already you know it's too, not any bottom not as much top end he said i think i'm going to go to a 22 or he said he didn't want to do a 21 or a 20 because it's not very much different and he's running i think the i think he's running the no he said he wanted to go to 21 but anyway my whole thing is i wanted you to explain to me okay because now people are going to think Oh, well, the 1242 carburetor is only good for pump gas, because that's what I got out of what he said. Now, did, did Border Gel go online and say that? He went on a video and said that. I haven't watched it. Yeah. He said, and I said, you, you know, I said, you know why? Because send me a link to that? Yeah, I will I'll send like you a link. And the, right, and the reason I, I just push record, I'm recording you, and I want to promote, I want to put our conversation, and I'll let you know if you don't mind, because it's cool with you, on a video that I'll do upcoming, because a lot of people, I get like sure. at least 20,000 people that watch me a month. So, and they know okay. what I'm doing, and they know what I'm building, they know I'm promoting you, and, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm, not, I, you know, I chose you guys, and they know why I chose you guys, and now that I got this guy, we're not buddy buddies, we're not going to go grab a, a drink together, I don't drink, but we're not going to go have a cup of coffee, but he is a guy that people watch in, right now, and he has over a thousand, he, he will influence people, and I don't want people to get the wrong idea. When I see some, and I've dealt with that with my engine builder, Lance, at, at RC Renew, when people would talk trash, I'll defend the guys that I have doing my shit because, I'm, you know, that's the way I am. You know, so when he said that, I'm like, are you kidding me? Come on, guy, fuck. Why are you even listening to John? John's going to tell you that because he does, he's running the competition. He did, The 1242 was designed by OBR, okay, not Bart alone. You know, oh, the 990 rooster tail stock modded, whatever. Oh, yeah. Just don't get the, the 1242 because it's only made for pump gas. And then this guy's saying, just running your engine. Yeah, I'm glad I got the 990. I'm like, which I don't even know why you got the 990. I don't even think he talked to either one of you guys. So, so, anyway. so I mean, I could tell you, I could tell you exactly yeah. what, the, what the 1242 is. Um, well, so I just want you to tell people that it's not just for pump gas. Because people think now 1242, oh, it's only for pump gas. <laughs> well. Well, I mean, if I'm being recorded right now and I'm, I'm speaking to, to the masses, the first thing I'm going to say is, uh, you know, if you're going to have if you're going to have something built, listen to your engine builder. Exactly. Like, thank you. Thank you very much. Don't, thank you, Dan. Okay, don't no, don't sit here and listen to somebody that doesn't build engines. Okay. That, <laughs> that that's just something that I, I've I've never been able to comprehend. Yeah, me you know, either, bro. Sure there's there's I'm, I'm sure there's people out there that you know they're smarter than the average guy and I totally get it but the 1242 <laughs> was definitely not designed just for pump gas I mean I've ran that carburetor on methanol uh, high octane 110 c12 q16 uh, 100 all the way down the Coleman camping fuel okay so the, 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 the say that you did so basically you did you did your homework <laughs> I mean we're O'Neill brothers racing we always do our yeah homework. that's what I'm saying you guys always you do know, homework I mean, this is the thing, you know, uh, we've been in almost in business for 20 years, full time. And, you know, and this is a fact. If, if we didn't know what we were doing, we wouldn't have made it this far, and especially in a state that it's super hard to even have a small business in. So, oh, yeah, especially right now. You know, it, it, it's hard for me. It's hard for me to say, yeah, we got our heads that far up our asses. But yet we've had a full time business for 20 years you know, doing this exclusively. Like, we don't do, you know, it's not, this isn't a side gig for us. This is this is how I, you know, how I feed my family, how my partner Sean feeds his family. So, yeah, we do do our research. We do uh, do our testing. And, you know, and a lot of the testing happens 
in the dark. We don't we don't sit here and every time we test something and every time that we do something we pat ourselves on the back. Yeah. Okay, that's part of our job is to create good products. Yeah. So you know the twelve forty two, and I'll tell you the truth is basically a nine ninety. Which is the funny thing about this is what we did is we took a nine ninety carburetor, we changed the pop off the levering and the plungering system inside to deliver more fuel. Okay, which modified carburetors, real modified carburetors, is what they were already doing in the first place. They were doing taking the twenty psi pop off valve and they were going to an eighteen psi pop off valve. That's what we did. We did the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other thing we did is that we added all the external goodies from Walbro. So we did the Teflon gaskets, we did the spiral diaphragm, we did the ethanol resistant primer bulb, and we also, now we have the, the, the HD primer bulb plate, which just gives it a little bit better seal. That was stuff all that Walbro suggested to do for us. So when we made the 1242, um, we wanted something that was like a modified 990, okay, but out of the box. Walbro made this carb from us. We don't, the carbs don't come to us and then we do it. We actually have Walbro do it from the factory, exactly the way we wanted it, and then when we get the carb, it's ready to ship out. So this is a, you know, just another example of people kind of talking out a term. You know, they're, they're, they're not really doing their research or... It, yeah, or exactly. That's one thing and, That's one thing I always emphasize to, to my viewers and subscribers or whoever watches me. And, you know, some of the guys that, that I've had off and on beefs with and guys that that are... We're not even on the... It's not that we're on different pages. There's some guys in the... And in, in you probably experienced this yourself and either 8-scale Nitro, which I'm more familiar with and I'm getting familiar with 5-scale. And, I, you know, this, this, this is you know something different for me that that a lot of times guys will go on information from people that don't even run or own what because they oh i heard this from this guy i read this or i seen this or i watched this video yeah but did you ever own that and run it and experience it yourself there's a huge difference and people don't do that and i say don't just do your homework do extensive research and make sure these people you're listening to have credibility in the first place What's their MO? What's their, what's their, I, I say, what's their pedigree? What's the guy's resume? Oh, well, he's been around and he has 15, you know, fifth scales and he has everybody's engine. He's, yeah, but does he build engines? Well, no. Okay, then who cares? I only listen to my engine builders and that, and I, like you said, it doesn't make sense to me. Why are you listening to somebody that does, and, and, and like I said, again, doesn't even run the engine you have or even the vehicle you have. You know, people are listening to, other people that don't even run what you're running but see what, what really Stupid. shocks me about what i guess border jail said about this I, yeah he's that's what he said on his video you know i mean i don't have a problem saying that on my video well john border jail well, well, made a video telling people and he got this from him and he listens to this guy and he's very influenced by this guy like every like a lot of people are you know i know i learned, learned to differentiate because i know John, that's not like he doesn't know anything. Or he's some dumbass, but he's not an engine builder. That's the one thing I will tell you. I don't care how long he's been around and how many engines he has. He will never, I will never take information from him about things like this as far as the engines. Because I will always go by my engine builder. But this is, the, here, here's the funniest part about it that I think is, and you can put this online, I don't care. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I can edit whatever you want, but if you don't uh, mind, I'll, I'll put it on my video. I don't care. I no, I know. Yeah, I'm not. I have nothing to hide. Yeah, you got you got no shame in your game because your game. I have no shame is, because yes. I'm, I'm speaking facts here. I'm not speaking it, exact, opinions or thank, theories. Okay? Yeah, exactly. So the funniest part about this whole thing is that Mr. Bordagel himself, he knows who Mikey Batts is. Mikey Batts runs 1242s on both his twins, on his twin engine, and on his you know, his almighty 34. That's one, what two years in a row in the drag racing scene. Yeah. All right. And does he run pump gas? Mikey Bats? I don't not that I know of. <laughs> I don't think absolutely so. Absolutely not. Not. He yeah. has something called the liquid poison, which is his own mixture of of octanes and fuels. Okay, okay. so Mikey makes his own. Mikey Bats makes his own, huh? Right. Okay. He does not run pump gas. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And it's so funny because I know Borajel has seen his 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 cars run personally, like in person. Yeah, right there. So you're gonna sit here and say that it's only meant for pump gas, but here you are. You got a world-class drag racer running those carbs on his engines on our OBRs, not running anywhere close to what pump gas is, and performing well. 
Yeah. So it's here. Here's a contradiction for you, and it, and it's kind of odd that somebody would say that when you have the evidence right in front of you. Yeah. Like here it is, and it's been proven. It's not like oh he just put it on recently. He's been running those cards for a long time. Yeah. So it it's uh it's just real funny that the theory of this with all the evidence around it, but yet that's what, what is being said. Yeah, and when I heard it right away, I'm like, oh, hell no, because he knows how I am. His name's Woogie Nitro, that's his channel. He's the one that has the 5D I mean, like mine, uh, and he's just, he goes by a lot, which, and I keep telling him. The same thing with, like I said about mine, whoever is building my engines, I don't give a shit what anybody says. I am going by what his says. Now, I'll listen, and I'll say, okay, yeah, that sounds good. Okay, well, hold on. Let me, let me go check that with my engine builder and see what he says. And whatever he says, that's it. So This is a big thing is, you know, what? there's a lot of what? information out there, okay? And you, what I tell guys is just use use basic common sense. If it doesn't make sense, then it's probably not true. Yeah. You know, if, you know, if, if you're going to buy shocks from somebody, like, so you're going to go buy shocks from Matt at <laughs> MOD, then don't go to somebody else for shock help go to matt for the shocks because he made them he designed them. yeah, yeah. why why am i listening them. to john doe that doesn't even run those shocks telling me oh i heard this and i heard that and you know you should right. <laughs> come on man people wake I up mean, so so it's just like you know use that little bit of common sense you're gonna have yeah. a ninja builder whether it be me chris or or bruce at gizmo or, or damo at, at rooster tail then if he builds your engine then you go off what he tells you exactly and what he wants you to run yep. don't go off the other guy because that's not your engine the other thing too is you go listen to somebody else you can void warranties you can mess your engine up all us all our all us engine builders build our engines a certain way yeah okay they're all there's a lot of similarities don't get me wrong but we all build them differently so I always tell guys, even at the track, when I'm helping dudes, even when I'm tuning Barlone's engines or other people's engines, you know, I tell them, you know, go off what Chris tells you to run. Run his oil ratio. Run his fuel he tells you to run. Now, if you want me to tune it, I'm going to tune it my way. But, you know, make sure that you follow those guidelines. Okay? So, if, I, you, if I have a building engine for you, go off my guidelines. Yep. Reason why? I do this every day of my life, bro. You know? like, <laughs> I built your engine. Listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. Trust if, me. If I, know, if I know anything in this world, it's this. Yeah. Okay? I, I you know, eat, don't, sleep, don't breathe, and... Yeah, but I eat, sleep, breathe, and shit. Fiscal engines. <laughs> yeah. Every day of my life is, is this. Yeah. Okay? So it's, if I, I'm not sitting here patting myself on the back. I'm just saying, like, this is my... No, I'm, that's... I'm, you I just keep... A, that's I'm true. I'm a specialist. Yeah. This is, I'm an engine specialist. Am I a shock specialist? No. Do I know how to build shocks? Yes. But am I a specialist? No. no. Not whatsoever, dude. Like, no. Don't listen to me. Go listen to, like, go listen to the guy that built your shocks. Yeah. Okay? Go listen to the guy that built, and that's that's probably the biggest advice I can give anybody. But yeah. this 1242 okay, thing, is that is just completely ridiculous. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of shocked that somebody with that reputable... You know, yeah, he's pretty influent. I mean, whether that. whether I mean, he, you know, weird. we, you know, and I, I know the mo of him all, all together, and we've had our we've had our altercations too because he just is the type of guy that doesn't like. He wants everybody to go with like he's the guy. I'm the Pied Piper. Follow me. I'm not that guy. I, you got to prove to me that you're worth even listening to in the first place. I'm not average Joe, and that's one of the problems that, that we would run to, and and whatever hobby it is or or anything in general is. People just go by hearsay, you know, I, I got to see factual evidence. I got to see you own what I am looking at or thinking about. You own it, you run it, and you have experience with it. And then still, I'm listening to the guy that built it. You didn't build it, though, so it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? But exactly. it's just too much of people listening to guys that don't even run or own anything. And they just go off, well, the guy has a lot of experience. I don't give a shit how much experience he has. Has he owned, does he own one? Has he ran one? No, what he has, and I don't give a shit about the past. Is he now running what we're talking about? Is he running an OBR34 signature series in a 5B? No, but he's, uh, uh, no, he, is he or isn't he? No, okay, I don't give a shit what he says is. What he says falls on deaf ears to me. I'm listening to the guy that's running it, the same thing I'm running as far as my vehicle and my engine and pipes. Although, and especially the guy that built it. Because I have lots of friends of mine, like I said, that run what I'm going to be running. But ultimately, I will 
go by what you tell me because you're the one that built it, the engine. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, I got to get going, Dan. I just wanted to hit you up about that. Um, I'll hit you up next week, and uh, uh, 